All right, so that's changed the way you think. Number two, learn future skills. And I'll tell you a story about this as well. Learn future skills. You see, being strategic is about broad scope thinking and long term thinking. When it comes to, thank you YouTube for that, hitting home. When it comes to, you know, um, changing status quo, you have to and, and embrace. You see, we in this world, eh, we have very few things we are um, in control of. <clears throat> and that's the beauty of strategy. We're not talking about things you can you, you can do. We're talking about things that are happening around you and you're trying to place yourself in a place where they become an advantage, not a disadvantage. And I'm talking about number two, learn future skills. When I was, this one is partly spiritual, but some of us are spiritual and can pick up some of the things. I was in, I think 2009, I had the premonition to study a technology called SQL Server, 2009. I did a lot of procrastination. Eventually, I took one exam. Later on, in 2011, I took another exam and so forth. But I remember a particular experience I had. And I will, t I will tell you how this accumulated, for some of you who have not heard the story, how this manifested and now brought me to Accra. Now, I, I remember very well, I, his name is Soji. I was sitting down, I was studying, I was... I, we had a small civil server instance in Airtel back then. I used to use it to practice because nobody really paid much attention to it. I used to practice, practice log shipping, practice configuring one or two things, backing up, all sorts of stuff, reading. And some people knew I was studying SQL Server. And he sat beside me, he was asking me about it. So I said I was studying SQL Server. He said, why don't you study Oracle? You know, because in his mind, uh, Oracle is another database technology that is more popular and that is more rewarding in terms of salary in, in, in certain uh, environments. So he asked, why don't you study Oracle? But you see, a lot of people were studying. Oracle was popular. Civil Server was not as popular in the enterprise in our part of the world. But you see, because of what I had heard, I was studying for the future. I was not studying for the present. I was studying something that was emerging because at that time, Super Server started becoming popular. They started boasting that they were the most secure database. <clears throat> it was cheaper. And, you know, when companies start cutting their costs, they start looking at those options. And it was evolving. At that time, it was 2008. Server, uh, Super Server 2008. In the next couple of years, they brought to 2012. And, and it just kept getting better, really. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he, he, he put that question to me that, why are you not studying Oracle? Which means, why are, we, why are you not doing what everybody can see is working now? You are trying to do something that will likely work in the future. Now, that was how, that's another way you can interpret that question. So the, the question I have for you is, are you preparing for the future? In what ways are you preparing for the future in the context of learning? Right? You see, I want to I want to distinguish learning from facts. You know, there are some facts. You just oh, AI, 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 you're just saying it with your mouth, but you really don't know much about it. <laughs> right? Oh, digital, 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 digital. But there's no no specific thing you have grasped in that area that is, that is meaningful in your context. People distinguish themselves by, no, by going deep. Mike Mudok said, learn something about everything, then learn everything about something. Let me mention here, at that time my focus was civil stuff. I wasn't listening to anybody. Everybody was thinking, this guy, Everybody left me alone, really, because nobody else was touching that server. No, it, it didn't seem to be important <laughs> to anybody. It didn't seem to be important, right? But I felt that's what I, I should do. Because, see, to every labor, there's profit. If you become deep 
in one area i just just last week somebody somebody uh, came to me and asked me whether i knew anyone who wanted who was skilled in microsoft visio if you know microsoft you may not know it but it is a, a tool for make, doing drawings that was produced by microsoft drawings modeling they were looking for somebody who could go to kenya to take a contract in that area right so they needed someone who is proficient in microsoft vision yeah i said to myself wow just microsoft vision and it, it happens to be one of my skills but of course i can't leave my job right now but the, the point is that no matter how insignificant something seems when you go deep in it you stand out i i used to talk to Aidan back then about the fact that a lot of tailors when they make my shirt the button hole is not properly done right it's not probably it's not it's, sometimes it's rough it's this and i've done it one two three fashion designers imagine if one fashion designer decides i'm going to become the expert in bottle hole button hole you know design or whatever everybody around will be coming to you have the machine you have everything to create perfect button holes going deep or somebody says well okay um you know you see this this like depth of expertise that's what i'm not talking about i was learning for depth and i was learning for the future 2011 was it 2011 yes 2011 2011 somebody called one of our bosses from accra and he asked him is there any do you know anybody who knows siku Saba? he came down he came down um, from the fifth floor to the fourth floor. He asked, who knows Siku Seba? There's a guy at the end of the hall. His name is Yinka. <clears throat> he just pointed in my direction. There was no contention. There was no less... Uh, there was, he, he didn't have to like me. I didn't even know him too well. This or I wasn't his friend. But he was just looking for someone who knows Siku Seba. That's all. And I happened to be the one that everybody knew was studying Siku Seba. I wasn't even a super expert. But everybody knew that was what I was studying. He pointed in my direction. I had three interviews that year. One, three of them over the phone. By November 22nd, I got my offer letter. By January, I moved to Accra. Excuse me. <coughs> By January, I moved to Accra. Position for opportunities. Now, I want to let you know that for some of you who are spiritual, you say, ah, it was God, or in fact, it's God. Of course, of course it's God. But you see, God is working every day in many ways around you. There are many people that walk into your shop and ask, do you know how to do this? And you say, no. If you had known how to do it and got an opportunity, you would have said it was a miracle. But because you are not ready for it, you couldn't, that couldn't translate into a miracle. It couldn't translate into a miracle because you are not prepared for that opportunity and i'm talking about learning future skills it doesn't look like it's important now but you know that this is a need you know that it's a need everybody knows the surface of it but nobody has gone deep deep enough to be the go-to person learn future skills that is point number two many new fields are emerging and you see one of the things about future skills is that it requires that you stretch your cerebral capacity you stretch yourself you can decide to be normal let's just keep doing what we've been doing right excuse me let's just keep doing what we've been doing because it's too hard to stretch into another area and i want to let me I, I will tell the next story about how I moved into another area in the next point when I'm making the next point. But le that, that learning is a stretch of your mental capacity. It's a stretch. You have to stretch yourself. If, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. You have to stretch yourself. You have to say, look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stay on course and get this done. I'm going to learn this. I'm going to position myself right through learning. I'm going to find the skill and go deep in it. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of motivation, a lot of foresight, a lot of sacrifice, you see. And in those days, nobody was paying for my exams. I paid, I used, I saved money and paid for my exams to write. 
I, I read, I bought the books and, and, and with my money. Sometimes I had to print books to read. You know, people will watch what you're doing and we wonder, what is this a vehicle? <laughs> so, you see, there's a process of sacrifice to move to that level where you are ready for the next opportunity. The opportunities are coming, but they have not translated to a miracle because you are not ready. Every day, people are asking, do you know how to do this? Do you know this? Do you know that? You know, can you do this? The questions are coming. Thank you, Kathy, for that. Discipline and foresight. Do you know that? Those are the opportunities. But you see, because you've not prepared, it hasn't translated to a miracle. Number three. This story is a conversation I had with my former MD. His name is Dr. Thomas Fashioner. It was, I think it was in 2018. And some of you who are in this call may remember the conversation because it was in a town hall meeting. That conversation, I was in a town hall meeting and I'm, what I'm talking about is number three. Number three is question the status quo. Don't be relaxed. Question, is there something else? Question the status quo. If you're going to be ready for opportunities. In that town hall meeting, Dr. Fashino had showed a lot of data on what we are doing as an organization and what we are about to do. You know, a lot of them were time bound projects. And I, I, there's no need for me to detail it here because it's probably it's private information. But what you need to understand is that a lot of them were time bound. That means it could take maybe two years, some of them would take two years, one year, two years, one year, two years. Then I questioned. I, I asked the question because at that time we were also employing people. I think we were about 500 at that time. So I kind of like asked the question that went something like this, that when we finish doing all these projects, what will happen to these people that we're employing? I acted stylishly. I didn't want to cause a stare. Dr. Dumisi's response was directed at me because he thought that I was asking just for myself and said, oh, you have to upscale, you have to. He was right, but see, there was a bigger picture. And it's true that you have to upscale and get ready for the future because when things change, whether I think there was robotics coming, there was a lot of stuff coming that had potential to take people's jobs and the people that were working on them were were implementing stuff that would uh, when they when they are done when I start looking for what they are going to do. <laughs> oh my goodness! So I asked that question, and um, at that point, because then we're also talking about cloud computing. Then I that, and then I began to think about myself. I said, look, after a while, being a database administrator. Remember, this was my first quantum leap. I moved into Accra as a database admin. That was quantum leap. I, but I did not stay. I did not decide that, oh, this is the miracle of God. The miracle is not forever. There, there's a next level. So I was questioning the status quo. And I realized that I could not be a database administrator forever. I could not remain in that position forever. There has, there's something else. Things were changing. I could see things changing around me. So you have to observe the environment. That's why I'm talking about questioning the status quo. What does the the shifting, the movement I'm seeing around me, what does it indicate? <clears throat> what is it telling me? What is the movement telling me? Am I ready for the implications of this movement? So I said, look, I can't be a DB anymore. What's the next step? That's when I began to realize I needed another quantum leap. So, of course, start applying, start reading, start trying. One of the days, um, one of the one of the seniors began to question me about my my next my next step. I said I had an opportunity to go to another bank. He said, oh. 
as also a database admin. <clears throat> a database admin again, and it struck me and said, okay, where do I go from here? So he, he asked me whether I would be interested in enterprise architecture. And I thought about it, began to study about it. I mean, it wasn't, it was like, it was like a, 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 a deviation from what I was used to. But I had to embrace it as the opportunity. Further down the line, a few months later, we had we had an accident, so to speak, in my workplace. And I had to move change departments. And that was already waiting for me. That opportunity was already waiting for me. That's how I became an enterprise architect. 2019. The opportunity was there. The circumstances played out that what the conversations I've been having in myself and with my colleagues pushed me to another realm and I took hold of it. Question the status quo. What does what that what does the shifting around? And if you want, I, I, I talked a lot about this in in my career growth strategies for information technology. The the fact that this happened in this way doesn't mean it has to happen the same way for everybody. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you want to pick out the principles. And this third one is for you to question the status quo. Is there something different I can do apart from what I'm doing now? Is there another way to approach this? Is the environment telling me something that I am not yet seeing? Am I, have I exposed myself enough to see where all this is going? right you have to ask those questions i hope i'm still communicating drop something in the chat share this with someone um type something that has struck you a decision you've made just type it let me know i'm still communicating let me know i'm still making sense yes thank you elizabeth for the feedback <clears throat> awesome i'm going to share one more point One more point. First of all, I, I started by talking about the fact that we have to change our thinking. And I give two methods to do that. I talked about the fact that we have to learn future skills. <clears throat> Number three, I said we have to question the status quo. Don't be just as you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Chukebuka, Aidan. Thank you, Prosper. Good to see you. Yeah. I talk about questioning the status quo in your own space. Ask questions. Is there anything different from this? You know, is there another opportunity somewhere? Can I do something else? I mean, break out of the way you've been conditioned. This, uh, your experiences have conditioned you. Your environment has conditioned you. Uh, your failures. Sometimes your failures condition us. I say no let me just let me just respect myself and stay here but sometimes you have to take the leap 